cross, you're not going to hit. That's the most important thing too, because it works. I mean, all right? And I'm sure everybody's wondering what I was doing when I was at the plate, tugging on my glove, tapping my toe. Really quick. All right. Anybody like that feeling that their toe is really tight at the end of their shoe? You know, I like that feeling. I wanted my shoes to feel tight before I was about to exert energy. That's why I'm tapping my toes. If I have something on my hands, I want my hands to feel the same way. I am not unstrapping my gloves. I'm actually pulling them down to get my fingers at the end of the glove. So I'm pulling them down. So the bit real quick. Pulling them down, pulling them down, pulling them down, pulling them down. I don't know, I don't know how many times I'm doing it. I'm thinking about what I'm about to do that next day. You think I took too long? I took eight seconds. The moment I started tapping, I'm just waiting on the pitcher. So eight seconds, I was ready to hit and smoke the guy and hit, hopefully hit a line drive off his forehead. That's what I would do. All right. The other thing too is my batting glove deal, my shoe deal was the best in all of baseball because it was on TV all the time. So that was another thing. I made a lot of money doing it. So that was another reason why I did it. Anyway, I got that out of the way. Now, hitting. Important thing, balance. You've gotta be balanced in order to hit. We cannot be off balance when we're hitting. Now, what does that balance mean? I am telling everybody's different. All our bodies are different. The way our minds think, the way our body reacts is all different. I'm not here to create robots. But I do know balance is important to hit a ball. I mean, play golf. Golf, right? Balance is important to hit a golf ball, right? And that thing is just standing there, and it drives me freaking crazy laughing at my eyes. I, I mean, I wish they would pick it up and throw it at me because I had a better time hitting it. Anyway, so what does that mean? Well, I, when I was selling little kids, when I tell my, my, my kids when they were first starting to play baseball, I had them in a batter's box and they would jump. You know why? Because you naturally land in a balanced position. Barely do we jump and do we land like straight. We usually land, like, hey, my body's going, whoa, that's, that's it. Or if you think about you played other sports, right? I used to tell some kids, you play basketball, soccer? They're like, yeah, I've never played baseball. I'm like, all right, how would you defend me? Would you defend me standing like this? No, you defend me right here before you're going around. I'm like, great, let's grab a bat. All right, you're in a position, balance. Okay, next one. Let's think about how we want to hold the bat. Rule of thumb, this isn't like saying, all right, rock the science, you have to do that. But a lot of times when we grab the bat, we want to start it off in our fingers, wrap our fingers, and then lift it up. You have it too far in your hands, we call this kind of choke in the bat. The reason why I do if I do this, I can't control the barrel of the throw. You see how my elbows go up, everything's kind of up. Now I'm kind of awkward, now I'm not controlling it. Just like a golf club. You don't want to choke that golf club in the palm, it's kind of in our fingers to actually feel the head of that golf club going through the zone. Same thing with our bat. You ever see baseball players when they sit out of the batter's box? And they kind of do this. They're like thinking about, oh, I'm going to get this guy. They kind of do that. What they're doing is they're trying to feel the barrel of that of the, of the bat, and they're like going to throw the barrel at the ball. It's easier to do that when you have it more in your fingers than it is if you have it gripping in your hand. You kind of feel that. That kind of helps you with the grip. Whatever that may be, you always hear, oh, you got to line the knuckles, you got to do all that. This is whatever's comfortable, all right? But trying to just get that feel. Now, where do we put our hands when we're about to hit? So, I already got the grip. I'm laying, laying it on my shoulder, for example, and I'm about to hit. Every big leaguer hits their hands. If I drew a circle right around my shoulder, around this area, we'll get them there before they're about to hit the ball. I don't care if you're Kevin Euclid, it's all screwed up. He gets there. I don't care if you're Great Council. I don't care if you're Sheffield. They get into a position, if I drew a circle, ready to hit. We have to get there. Now, if you're wondering, what is that for you? Here's how you find out. If I put the back down here, and I'm in a balanced position and I told you now with your top hand I want you to punch that as hard as you can you're angry you're gonna hit that we're not thinking about hitting but I want you to punch that so if you got ready and you're going all right I am really gonna punch it there watch this oh that's what my hands have to do that's what it is for me some guys might some people might go okay it's down here you might be high. still in that circle my body just naturally told me that's my strong position so they have to get there. I don't care where you start them, but they have to be there before I'm about to hit. So I'm balanced, get my hands there, and I'm ready to hit. Now, we can load, and we're going through the ball. We definitely have to load because I want some movement. I want some rhythm before I hit. You can't just go from a standstill, ready to hit. You can't time it that way. Our body is recognizing something coming. In order to hit it, we have a natural just kind of rhythm movement. So that's where we talk about a load to go hit through the ball. Now, strike. Do we need a stride? Do we have to stride, right? Well, stride for two things. Striding is usually to time it. So there's timing. So as we're striding, for timing to time the ball. And the other thing is power. 
Yeah, the striding really helps with those two things. Okay, so it helps with kind of getting our mo movement going forward and helps with power. Now, if you can do that without striding, it's not a bad thing because now I'm in more control. There's less things that can happen so I can make contact. Contact is more important than how far you can hit it. Because if you make contact, I don't, if you don't make contact, I don't care how far you hit it. It doesn't matter if you ain't hit it. Make contact. That's the most important thing. If we make contact, we give ourselves a chance. And this game's a lot more fun than we make contact. So those, that's more important. So stride kind of helps with any of the stuff to do that. Sometimes we stride, we can get ourselves in trouble, over stride, our barrel drop, things like that. Now, how many other people elbow up? We hear that? Elbow up when they're about to hit, right? Drives me crazy. Please don't do that. Elbow relax. When our hands are here, my elbows relax. Let me show you what happens when I put my elbow up. What happens? What happens when I put my elbow up? What does my barrel do? Points towards the pitcher. Well, why is that bad? Let me tell you why that's bad. Because my body, now, if I have my barrel pointing at the pitcher, and I'm gonna hit something that's coming down in that zone, my body now loops the barrel, drops it, now I'm underneath the ball, my front shoulder flies open, now I have no chance of hitting the ball. That's why it's not elbow up. It's elbows relaxed. You guys missed that. You guys had an elbow up. It was awful in there. I What's did. going on? I Hold, did. I had elbow up. Get in here. We gotta talk. I just had elbow up, no more. So, so, so not like Freddie Freeman. We so, coach. Hey, coach. <laughs> so, Freddie Freeman is not thinking about the elbow up. It's there. So the key is elbow relaxed. I hit my elbow was slight, but what happens if I'm thinking elbow up? I tense up and my barrel starts going forward. And now in order to get there, it loops. Arrow relaxed, that's where I want to be. These are relaxed. I am not ever thinking about how my arms, I'm thinking about more where my hands need to be before I hit than I am thinking about my elbow. Now, when I'm about to, some of the things you guys missed real quick, balanced, balanced, recap, I gotta be balanced. I'm holding the bat more in my fingers than in my palms because I can control the barrel. And at some point, they have to be in a strong hitting position. Where that is for you is how you're gonna punch the bat where I set up, my back hands have to be there right before I hit at some point. Every big player gets to that point. The circle here that they get there. That's important. Now, as I'm approaching to hit the ball, when I'm coming to the ball, now that I'm doing that, I'm trying to keep the barrel above my hands as long as possible. Then I release them through the ball. Why am I trying to do that? How many have ever heard knob to the ball? Taking a knob to the ball, right? Tony Gwynn talks about knob to the ball. I ain't arguing with Tony Quinn. <laughs> Why did he say knob to the ball? Well, let's think about that. What does that mean? If I have my hands in the proper position and I'm taking that knob to the ball, where's the barrel? The barrel's above my hand still. Then let me show you. Now, if I took that knob and I painted and I pointed it to the sky, now where's my barrel? Right? Or if I pointed it to the pitcher, now where's my barrel? knob to the ball, it starts going to the hitting zone properly with the barrel above my hands. That's why you hear kind of knob to the ball. Some people do it because they're bottom hand dominant. So but what is bottom hand dominant, top hand dominant? I'm right handed. So my right hand, my right hand is probably stronger than my left hand. That's my top hand. So I'm top hand dominant. If I bat left handed and I do right handed, more bottom hand dominant. So bottom hand, let's say I'm really thinking about that knob to the ball so I can keep the barrel above the ball me, it was my top hand trying to keep it. So I would come and I would practice off a tee, keeping that barrel above my hands as long as possible and trying to make contact. It's eventually gonna get to where I need to be. But if I start with it down there, it's gonna drop even more. That's why it's so important to stop, start with that barrel above the hands. They don't get there. What they teach right now is all screwed up. It's got off. You see some of these guys take practice swings and they're on deck circuit. You guys ever see this? Yeah. Yeah, the high ones. Yeah. yeah. You see how ugly that is? Yeah. I don't even know why they would do that. Everybody's watching. Holy smokes. <laughs> <laughs> but they're thinking about trying to keep that barrel through the zone as long as possible and through. But they're doing it wrong. The reason why that's a flaw because we as competitors, we try to get there sooner. By the time we get there, the barrel's actually dropping. The other thing, too, is we're putting our wrists in a weak position. These guys, I, I talk some of these analytic guys teaching these guys, you know what they don't factor in? These guys are smart, inertial mass. Inertial mass, so it's a barrel. This is heavier here. This was a swing. There, it goes down. 
You know what that is? That's three times heavier, just naturally. A swing is three times heavier. If you guys are ever on the swing and you want to know if the swing's going to hold you up, you want to see the max load on that, that better, better be at least three times your weight or else you're in trouble. <laughs> so, same thing. So, and it's funny. So, if I took this bat and it's about 30 ounces and I add in natural three times about 90, and that's about five pounds. And I told these guys who are teaching this, I said, I put a five pound weight and I told them to hold it up. Guess what their hands do? Whoop! about three guys who I know who are strong enough to actually hold that up in this world. That's it. But everybody goes like this. Because now, let's factor in how strong they are. And they're adding more velocity. So that means it's even more than three times than that. So if they're already practicing this, they're screwed. This is why you see everybody swinging underneath the ball. This is why you see the pop-ups and they can't hit a high pitch to save their life. Because everything's going like this. They don't factor in inertial mass. This is why old school, and everybody says line drive and stay on top of the ball, because I'm thinking about the barrel having to be above my hands because it's eventually going to drop. And it's factoring in inertial mass so my barrel can be there. They don't want to hear that. They don't understand that because I'm speaking their language. It's crazy. But that is what needs to be. So when you see these guys, it's not good. That's why, that's why the averages in baseball are so low right now. Do you see it changing back? What's that? Do you see it changing back? God, I hope. Well, only the good hitters. Yeah, they, 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 those analytic guys don't know how the body Time to go ahead. They don't understand 